say we have a brick and we want to know the dimensions of this brick. We want to know the length, the width, the height, all the stuff about this brick. What are we going to do? Now, your first instinct is probably a lot like mine and you turn to a tape measure, right? You measure the length of the brick. That's seven and three quarters, yada, yada, yada. A little two and a quarter, two, two and five sixteenths. You get the idea. Measure the brick with a tape measure. Now, a tape measure is a great tool, and I feel like people don't appreciate how precise you can actually get with one of these. You know, this tape measure, that is a, that is a creepy, creepy door. This tape measure will get you down to a sixteenth of an inch, and so just with your eye, you know, if your vision is good enough and you're willing to, to pay attention to what you're doing, you can be precise within about a 32nd of an inch, somewhere between a 16th and a 32nd. So you're, you know, you're within like 30 to 40 to 50 thousandths of an inch, give or take, which is pretty precise. So for a lot of measuring tasks, a tape measure is going to be the perfect tool. But what if you're not measuring a brick, right? What if you're measuring something way smaller? What if instead of a brick, you want to measure a dime? Now, if somebody asks you to measure the thickness of a dime, you could take a tape measure, right? And it's about a sixteenth of an inch. It's just a half a hair under a sixteenth. But if somebody's asking you for the thickness of a dime, they probably don't want an answer that starts with about. They probably want an answer that starts with a number. How are you going to get a precise number out of something that small with a tape measure? The answer is you're not. What if, instead of a dime, you want to know the thickness of a baseball card? What if it is a 1989 Fleer Bill Ripken? And you want to know the thickness of this 1989 Fleer Bill Ripken, right? What are you going to do? Why would you want an 89 Fleer Bill Ripken? I don't know. I guess you'll have to look it up. But that's what that is. So, we want to know the thickness of this baseball card. We want to know the thickness of this dime. What tools are we going to use? Now, with any problem, there's always going to be a bunch of different ways to solve it. And you could do something, you could use a, ver a pair of vernier calipers. Vernier, vernier, vernier. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Uh, it's French. You could use a pair of these French calipers and it's got this gradated scale in here. It's not too tricky, but it is a thing you have to learn how to use. That's an option. You could use these really nice dial calipers made by Sterrett, which are pretty damn precise. That's also a great option. But today what we're gonna use so we're going to use digital calipers. These are a great workhorse in the shop for everyday measurements of all kinds of different things. So let's real quick show how you can use a pair of digital calipers to measure the thickness of a dime or the measure the thickness of a 1989 Bill Ripken Fleer. Let's do it. First thing you want to do when you turn your digital calipers on is you just want to make sure that you're actually at zero. They will all have a calibration button that you can reset your zero. Just make sure that you are actually starting off where you think you're starting off. It is not a terribly hard mistake to make to have the calipers open, have that button be pushed, you go to measure something, and you're off by whatever that initial setting was because you weren't paying attention to what you're doing. So every time, hit that zero, make sure you're starting off at 0, 0.000. Otherwise, what's the point? Now, most sets of digital calipers are going to give you an option to switch between either displays in inches as a decimal, or fractions of an inch, or millimeters. Which comes into super handy, especially when you have to switch between different scales like we often do. The 3D printer wants all its measurements in millimeters, the router is all in inches, we're often switching back and forth and having to use different uh, measuring standards. So it's definitely handy to have all that in one device. But so let's go back to our dime, right? And we're going to do everything in inches today. So. There's a couple different ways that you can measure with digital calipers. You have your outside dimension being taken here, your inside dimension being taken there, and then at the other end of the caliper, there's a depth depth gauge, depth depth feeler. There's a way to measure. There's a way to measure depth. I'm not sure exactly what that's called, but it's your depth measurement. Anywho, um, so if we wanted to know the diameter of this dime, you close these outside jaws around the exterior perimeter, whatever you're measuring, and you find out that that dime is approximately 0 0.7045 inches, which is a very handy thing to know. And obviously, you can do the same thing for the thickness of the dime, which gets us down to 0 0.0545 inches, right? That is the kind of precision 
and decimal that you are not going to get out of a tape measure, no matter how hard you try. Let's see what this actually ends up being. This is, uh, I have to admit, this is actually a reprint. This is not uh, an authentic original one, but, you know, I wasn't going to spend 50 bucks on that joke. This baseball card comes in at 0 0.0160. Pretty thin. Once again, if that's a measurement that somebody's asking you for, they want to know the thickness of that baseball card, they probably want that answer as precise as you can give it. While I have everything on the bench, let me quickly demonstrate the different ways you can measure with these digital calipers just as a uh, little example. And we will use this not so heavy brass T fitting to show. So on the calipers, you can either measure this inside, that outside, or the depth gauge. So the outside measurement works like here, yeah, right, 8.33. And then if you wanted to measure, say, the inside of that pipe, that's what these two little feelers up there would do. Now the, the measurement is being taken from the top here, that outside edge to that outside edge. So you can measure what the inside of a fitting is. Now, for instance, if you wanted to measure the interior of a space and you wanted to know from this top edge here all the way down in the brass down to the bottom, and you didn't want to take your outside dimension, you want to actually know what that measurement is on the inside, that is where the depth gauge feeler majig comes in for. So you can run it down with the thumb screw all the way till it touches bottom and then kind of right till we're, yep, we're touching the bottom and that top edge, which turns out to be 1.429 inches. So now we know what that depth measurement is. Uh, yeah, that is just a really quick overview on how you use digital calipers. I'm sure if you want to know more about it, there's 50,000 other videos you can watch. So that's the idea. Oh, also, just as a super convenient thing, I keep these in my tool belt whenever I'm on the job. I don't use them very often. In fact, I often forget that I have them, but the few times that I've had to pull these out to double check the diameter of a pin or something, yeah, it has really saved the day. So uh, highly recommend if you, if you work a job where that kind of question is possible to come up on the fly. I think I got these at Home Depot for like 10 bucks. Um, really handy to have in your back pocket so that you can double check a dimension and you're not just eyeballing it or guessing it or trying to measure a round thing with a tape measure. Um, yeah. Really good to have. Obviously, they're not digital, but you can read that scale. Last quick point I'm gonna make, and then I promise I'm gonna wrap this video up, is I mentioned it briefly when I was talking about these cheap calipers, but a really great thing that you can do with these is that you can measure things that are round, which otherwise can be a bit challenging. If you wanted to say, know the diameter of the Sharpie barrel, you can line it up on a tape measure, and you can get pretty close, you get an idea, but Sometimes with round objects, it can be really awkward to see exactly where those lines end up on a tape measure. But if you're using digital calipers, it ain't nothing. Bam. Look at that. It also comes in really handy when you've got tiny drill bits. For instance, these drill bits came out of a number drill bit index. So not a fractional one, but a very small index where the, the step between bits is rather tiny and everything is measured in decimals. It can be really hard to know just looking at it whether or not this is a 19, no, whether this is a 42 or a 43 or a 40 whatever bit, but using digital calipers, it's really easy to find out the, the exact diameter of that bit so you can actually know where to put it away properly because someone's going to assume that when you pull that bit out of the index, it was put back in the right spot. So once again, another really handy thing that you can do with these guys you can measure things that are round. Okay, I, I think that wraps this up. I think that covers how you measure small things, specifically how you measure small things using a pair of digital calipers. So I appreciate you sticking with me on this video. Uh, I hope it's been fun to watch. It's been twice as fun to make. So anyways, uh, thank you very much. Please let us know in the comment section what you thought of this one. Do hit like and subscribe so that we can make one more video. Stay tuned and stay safe. This video has been produced at the Triple Point Workshop in rustic and charming Pawtucket, Rhode Island. If you'd like to learn more about who we are and what we do, you can roll over to the YouTube channel about section on this page, or you can scroll down in the description notes and find the link to our Instagram account and see what ill-advised thing we are getting into today.